Hello, everyone, and welcome back to SALT Talks. My name is Joe Aletto, and I'm the production manager of SALT, which is a global thought leadership forum and networking platform encompassing finance, technology, and geopolitics. SALT Talks is a series of digital interviews with the world's foremost investors, creators, and thinkers. And just as we do at our global SALT events, we aim to both empower big, important ideas and provide our audience a window into the minds of subject matter experts. And we are very excited today to welcome Jeff Booth to SALT Talks. Jeff Booth is a visionary leader who has lived at the forefront of technology change for 20 years. He led BuildDirect, a technology company that aimed to simplify the building industry for nearly two decades through the dot-com meltdown, the 2008 financial crisis, and many waves of technological disruption. In January of 2020, Jeff released his first book titled The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is Key to an Abundant Future. In it, Jeff offers his provocative thesis about the current state of our economies and what must happen to enable a brighter future. He is a founding partner of OTO Labs, co-founder of AddyInvest.com and Knock Knock, and serves on the boards of Terramera, Cubic Farms, Lamazoo, Cynthiam, and the Richmond Hospital Foundation, as well as numerous advisory boards. And hosting today's SALT Talk is Brett Messing, President and Chief Operating Officer of SkyBridge, a global alternative investment firm. And I'll turn it over to Brett to conduct today's interview. Thanks, Joe. And uh, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a fanboy. Uh, your book, along with uh, The Price of Tomorrow, along with BJ Boyapati's piece, The Bullish Case for Bitcoin, uh, were I think two of the most important things that I read and that you know, led us here at SkyBridge to really lean into Bitcoin. And, you know, we now have approaching $600 million of Bitcoin across our funds. So, you know, and obviously it's worked out quite well. As we talked today, I think Bitcoin is around 57,000 or so. Um, I think it, it's, it's interesting time for us to get together. You know, the, the name of your book is The Price of Tomorrow, subtitle, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future. And today, President Biden signed the $1.9 trillion stimulus. And, you know, the 10 year has backed up to, you know, north of 1.6. It's come in a little bit. Uh, there's increasing concerns about inflation. There's concerns about, you know, rates rising uh, and adversely affecting the economy. You know, before we sort of dive into the general thesis of your book, I'd like to get your reaction because I think it to, to these events, because I think it does interact nicely with the things that you wrote about. Yeah. And, and what happened, what's happening is, in a in in a currency event that is going on, we we all tend to to look at the short term news. We get caught into what's happening, um, zoomed in, and instead of zooming out and to see what's really happening in a macro level, and and that macro level, when you understand what the game board will look like um, on both sides of the the game board, um, it's going to look a lot different in the future. And as the existing system flails it is bound to be choppy on both sides. So we can get into specifically the 10 year and everything else, but, but it's more important to understand the game board. And the game board is technology is creating exponential efficiency. And that efficiency um, is, uh, is deflationary and exponentially so. Most of the deflation is in front of us. And, 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 and so when, when I, kind of wrote this book and I looked at uh, the other side of this, what's stopping that deflation? So we see in consumer price index, we see consumer price index was lower again, uh, lower than expectations again. And it's because technology is driving some prices down faster than we can print into it. And so what's stopping that from reaching society, that would typically be a good thing. Our pr price is going down, we want prices to go down, we get more for less, that's what technology does. But on the other side of the coin, because we've lived in an inflationary world our entire lives, and that, that world requires more and more credit, um, governments are trying to stop that price, those price declines by lowering interest rates first, um, lower and lower and lower, which drives massive debt, debt bubbles to try to, to try to grow out of what's happening. And so those two giant forces are uh, colliding in society today, and require a different solution. So the existing the existing system, an inflationary world, cannot work with the technology where it is today. It's impossible. 
Um, you know, what I find interesting is is you sort of identify these by I think zooming out. And your book, I think, was published at the end of nineteen or or before it was before yeah, the yeah, pandemic, right? Yeah, beginning of twenty. Yeah. So a lot of the issues that we're talking about, I think, have been highlighted, right, for all of us. I mean, I can just tell you, for example, at Skybridge, we used to have a very large travel budget. I mean, even once everyone's vaccinated, we're going to travel 80% less, right, than we used to travel, right? So airplanes, hotel, food, right, just think about all the jobs and, right, multiply that across. So I, I can, it, it, it sort of, it sort of hit, hits home, Um can you, I guess, can you talk about how Bitcoin helps us, right? You know, and it helps us yeah. through this, out of this, to the other yeah. side of it. Yeah, and so, so, so if you if you think about okay, first on the um, when I said how much debt has been created over the last twenty years, kind of pre-writing the book. Um, so, so, so there was at the end of two thousand nineteen, there was two hundred and fifty trillion dollars of global debt to support an eighty trillion dollar, approximate eighty trillion dollar global economy. Um, and 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 that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. And there, you maybe you could have a thesis that somehow we could find new industries to grow our way out of the debt, maybe. Um, but when you realize that, if the, for my thesis to be true, it's exponentially driving technology down and exponentially driving debt accumulation to be able to try to stop it. When you realize that 185 trillion dollars of the debt uh, came in the last 20 years it takes your breath away. And that's just the start, right? So COVID accelerated these trends, exactly what you said. So, so now you said, now you have in the world, you have about approximately 132 or $130 trillion of negative real interest bonds that people deem safe. And that becomes the economic calculation for every other economic calculation. And they're, they're on your best day, you're going to lose money on it. And you know that governments have to print a lot more money because the existing system, if you allow deflation to happen, unwinds everything and there's nothing backing it. Banks fail, everything fails all the way to the ground and there's just counterparty risk all the way down to the ground. So just like, and, and so you know from reading this, I, I was intent, how do you find a solution out of this problem? How do you, but, but, COVID accelerated everything and governments did what they would do. They printed it, it, put it, put it into it. And Bitcoin is a solution out of that problem. It's a system change. And just like, just like uh, I, I compare a lot of these examples in business, a Blockbuster with 9,000 stores and all the attendant costs, all they missed was how fast technology was moving. And, now, and as technology changed download speeds, um, and Netflix had the advantage, and all of a sudden, Blockbuster had the disadvantage. Um, the uh, everything changed in an instant, and um, and blo what Blockbuster did is added candy aisles to their stores. And you laugh at it, but if you think about what economic policy is today, is adding candy aisles to the stores. It's uh, it, it cannot get out of this, and so this is going to be a system change. So it's funny, you know, I'm an Angelino. I was in LA a week ago. I'm in New York now with, with my daughter and I got met her there early for dinner. And I, I walked down this sort of Brentwood village quarter mile area and where the, I used to get my blockbuster videos is now a first Republic bank. And I realized that there are eight different bank branches in this quarter mile stretch. And I just started sort of laughing. Like it, I felt like I was looking at at bookstores or blockbuster videos everywhere. And it sort of underscored this idea of change. But I, I guess, Jeff, I understand why Bitcoin is good for me, for you, for an individual, right, against the systemic problems that I think the pandemic has really brought into focus. But I, I have trouble understanding how it's good for the United States of America or for your, you know, how do we get from where we are to where we want to be with Bitcoin, as opposed to Bitcoin just being, you know, as it's been, I think, appropriately characterized, a monetary life raft, right, to protect against systemic collapse, right? Or as Shamath calls it, you know, schmuck insurance. Yeah, I, I, I think it's way more than that. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a requirement today as a life raft. 
Um, it, it, it's a must in your portfolio, but I, I believe it's way more than that. So if you just th think exponentially advancing technology changes the rules, look at your phone and look at all the things that are free on your phone. The, and that's, that free is coming everywhere. It's or, or nearly free. Price declines are in front of us and more and more price declines are in front of us in every industry because of technology. And there's nothing that governments can do about it because, because why does a CEO add technology? It's to redu remove labor and give more for less. That's kind of the point. Technology is supposed to free our time. And so, so what that should look like in our life is in a free market is, is price declines next year less, less, less and, and, a, and a free market would make sure that the abundance gained from technology would be broadly distributed to society. So with, techno and it, with, with technology, how it's changed the rules, just like it changed the rules for Blockbuster, technology has changed the rules. And, that, and so there is a requirement, if we want that abundance in society, that, it, that currency allows for deflation. The only way to stop that and just uh, the only way to stop that is by consolidating control. So giving more power. So inflation is giving more people, uh, giving, giving wealthy more money, dividing uh, essentially. Inflation is the same thing as wage deflation. So you're picking the pockets of some and giving it to the others and holding asset prices unnaturally high, which, which causes you to print more money to consolidate control. It looks more like communism over time. And eventually the free market does, there is no free market. You have a market that's owned by the biggest thug. Okay, so I have to out myself as being a pretty traditional liberal Democrat. I worked in, in city government in Los Angeles. Um, technology, look, everyone's life is better with technology, right? It, it, it's, it's inarguable in terms of our day-to-day -day amount of content we can get, food delivered, like on and on and on. But it has concentrated wealth, right, in ways that make the Teddy Roosevelt trust busting seem quaint, right? So... Um, isn't there a revolution headed? So, so I, lo I, I love that you asked that. The reason it's concentrated wealth is because we're operating two systems. We're operating a non-free market system into technology that's doing it. And the more that you're doing it, you're driving wealth into the technology companies way faster. So the same thing that's manipulating market is creating those tech monopolies. But on a fundamental basis, Jeff, don't technology companies, which are, you know, right, Mark Andreessen famously, software is eating the world, they just don't need as many people, right? So what what, what do we do with all these? So you know, people need jobs, right? So, um, so, so I'm, 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 a, I, I'm, I believe in the free market, but I, I don't completely believe it that if we just leave it alone, everything's going to be okay. So, so this, and this is a really hard concept because we grew up in a different world. And every, every politician you hear, and, every, and I grew up in the same world, and it was a hard concept for me to even agree and write. And so I'm going to out myself there to, to rewire my brain and understand what was happening because of a rule change, um, because of what technology allows for, was really hard for me to comprehend because it changes everything. So we, we want more jobs. And the reason we're keeping more jobs is by driving wages down in a global fight to keep wages down, wage deflation or inflation is wage deflation. Well, technology takes them anyways. Mm -hmm. And what, by, by doing that, we're holding it prices high. So the people that are leading the companies the technology companies and the people that have the assets are winning everything. And we're dividing society as a byproduct. And that is a, that is a human condition, stopping the natural force of technology. Prices would fall, so, 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 and it's it's really hard concept to understand, but you don't pay for the air you breathe. Be and, and why? It's the most important thing in your life. You don't because it's abundant. And technology is creating that abundance everywhere. And that, and, and that and the, the 
as as more people are competing for that abundance, people think that a lot of the apps on your phone are free because because they get advertising dollars. They're free because it's a, the, your flashlight's a line of code, and it scales in uh, uh, it scales everywhere, and it never has to be written again. Um, it's free because your phone app looks like that too, or your your uh, your camera app looks like that too. And we take way more photos today. We have an abundance in photos um, for uh, for no cost, whereas before we had to take individual photos and it looked totally different. As those industries change and provide abundance, they should fall in price. And if we hold up price unnaturally by trying to cling to a system that's inflating. Then, then we divide society. So, Jeff, um, while Jan- Jan- Janet Yellen's comments about Bitcoin notwithstanding, she and I went to the same college, Brown. So, I'm sort of proud that you know we have a <laughs> Secretary of the Treasury. But that being said, let's assume that we elbow her out of the job, and we, you know, we put Jeff Booth in the job. Okay, and you have all the tools, including Bitcoin, most importantly, at your disposal. Fix stuff for us. How are we going to use? How is Bitcoin used? Right. How 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 would a wise, you know, policymaker use Bitcoin to navigate the challenges that we're facing on a macro level? So, and I think you would argue you would you would agree with this. The the problems that we're facing on a macro level have been made exceedingly worse by ignoring the problems that created them in the first place. And papering them over, and the externality is created by papering over those problems. First in two thousand, not in two thousand eight, before two thousand eight, but then in two thousand eight, and now more. And just like I predicted in the thesis, if if technology is driving exponentially this way, then you're needing exponential money printing to f- fix that this way. Now the problem is so bad that the government is. 26% of all income, personal in, income. So, so the government is the market. And, 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 and it's holding, it really, price of commercial real estate shouldn't not be anywhere near what commercial real estate is in, in COVID. Yet it's- side, If I can interject. So one of the, the SEC's resistance to a Bitcoin, uh, a Bitcoin ETF, is that the market is manipulated, right? Which is I, 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 funny. I, Right. When you think about, well, let's start with the oil market, right, where we have OPEC, right, we have the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and to say nothing of where you were headed um, in terms of market manipulation. just it, It's unbelievable. But, but again, you're holding prices high, preventing the market, the natural clearing functions of the market to, to take hold, to, to, to allow you to regrow the other side. And by doing that, there's a whole bunch of people left out of that wealth. So some people are you've made money unnaturally, and you pick the pocket of other people to give them. Now those same prices in real estate, houses, rents, everything else that you've unnaturally kept high, then this then a whole bunch of people that can't pay for their food or housing come back to government and say, "I need some money so I can pay for my uh, my food and housing," which they made the problem in the first place. And no actor in the system can change that. And by the way, and if I came in. I couldn't change. Uh, I couldn't change that because it's a system problem, and 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 again, g- when the rules change, smart people change. Ch- technology has changed the rules. The existing system will fail, and 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 the geopolitical mess. And normally, these systems fail through war, and they get they get reset. And first through, and a lot of times through revolution, then war, and then they get reset. I wish that wasn't the case, but the existing system creates more and more instability in the system because of because of ignoring fundamentals. In other words, stopping creative destruction at the company level and the economy level. All that happened is creative destruction moved to the to the currency and monetary level. Come on, Jeff, you're supposed to be a utopian technologist. Tell tell us how we. <laughs> Tell us how we use, you know, technology in the form of Bitcoin to, to get through this. You know, so now, you- so now that now the other the, uh, now the other side, right? If if governments today stopped printing, or fiscal or anything else, you would have a depression on your hands that would look like the thirties would look like a walk in the park. 
it would it, you would have everything collapse down to 90 percent uh, it would collapse by 90 percent banks would fail all the banks would fail governments would fail so that's why they can't let because because deflation the debt can never be you can't let deflation happen the debt can never be paid back but but the natural market is deflation because of technology so enter a system change from outside the system that's what bitcoin is it's a currency that would over time allow for deflation so if you measured your life in bitcoin in bitcoin you will see the natural market and pricing the the true pricing and prices will have everything over time will keep falling bitcoin will rise but if you measured if you if your currency standard is bitcoin is that if that's what your unit of account is you'll see over time the natural market and so if that happens slow enough and 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 bitcoin moves broadly into society then then that is a great thing because it also is a forcing function for technology to be able to move broadly to society. Um, so, so you're saying that that the for an individual, right, owning the Bitcoin is a way to defend yourself. But, but what's the government doing now, right? Because the government is 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 in that same same position you just you discussed, right? Which is if they try to shut the machine off, the economy collapses, they've got to find a way to sort of let things out sort of slowly, right? So, uh, so, so think about what's happening right, right now geopolitically, and this is connected. The, so, so China's printing more than the US to keep their dollar lower, to keep their labor rate lower, so that we buy more, so US buys more goods. And US is trying to, uh, to devalue their dollar to be able to gain jobs, lower their labor rate when technology is because if you lower your labor, labor rate, then technology won't take the jobs as fast. So that's what's happening all over the world. And it's kind of a race to the bottom on currency. More and more of, the, of this is happening. And that is creating the same geopolitical tension um, around, around the world. Communism is defunded by a free market. If there's anybody that knows this, it's the U.S. The U.S. was founded on on these principles on the rights of the individual and a free and a free market, and and so the only way to control citizens is through if 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 you if you actually so I suspect that that the best way for for the U.S. to actually kind of emerge emerge or really strong out of this is to embrace Bitcoin because. China won't embrace Bitcoin. So when you say embrace, do you mean hold it as a reserve asset? So sell our gold and buy Bitcoin? Like what, what, what is embrace? How does that manifest itself? I suspect that that'll happen eventually. Um, and it might happen quietly uh, uh, early on. But first, it'll be uh, uh, regulation around the on-ramps, off-ramps, and a whole new industry ecosystem that is uh, that is that understands where technology is going and why that's a good thing for uh, for humanity. Have you, let me, let me ask you so back. So, uh, you know, I would have rightly, I think, well, not rightly, people will probably accuse me in the fall of being too bullish on Bitcoin. And the last six months, it's just been remarkable. You know, the events in terms of the institutional adoption, um, you know, banks committing to it, right? From B of A Mellon to JP Morgan. I mean, they're being pulled by their invest by their clients. Like they're not, you know, they're not going into it. They're, you know, they realize they have to do it, or, or their customers are going to go somewhere else. What, what you, is it? Is this what you expected? Is it happening faster? It's, um, it's what I expected. Um, I, uh, I, I, I think it'll. Um, I think in this cycle, we'll see it continue like this, and um, and then in the next end of the next half, it'll trade sideways for some time. It'll go way up from here this year, I believe. Um, then it'll trail back down into the next having cycle. As it trails back down, and um, it down and choppy for the next kind of two years after that, um, people will bias why it's doing that because they'll say okay government's going to regulate it or this or this and then into the next halving cycle i believe it's going to take off again all right so i want to press on this um i'm not an economist but you know i happen a trader and 
what I have experienced is that all great obvious trades eventually go away, right? So the grayscale arbitrage right, was a great trade and we've done it. And I had this instinct in September to, when the, to not do it. And gratefully we didn't do it, which falls in the category of like better lucky than good. good lucky. <laughs> um, but it feels to me like half the world has the following trade on. I buy Bitcoin at the halving and then I sell it 14 to 18 months out. And that feels to me like the grayscale trade. And so it's my personal view, and I like your reaction to this, that one of two things is going to happen. I, I, I think this cycle looking like the other cycles is a less than 10% chance. So I think either it's going to, this cycle ends much sooner than people are expecting, right? And we head into a crypto bear market, you know, earlier. Or, and I'm wearing a Bitcoin hat, so you can imagine what this, <laughs> right, is. Right. this is the one... I think that we're going to get to a high number. People will sell their Bitcoin, some OG Bitcoin holders. You may even see hedge funds short Bitcoin, and it's just going to laugh at everybody and keep moving higher. I'm not saying we're not going to have cycles, but that it will go higher and the, the, the bull market will last longer from a temporal standpoint than people expect. And then, of course, you know, do you have any thoughts on that? Because I, 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 I love that you said that. So, so one of the things that when, when you hear the FUD around Bitcoin, um, you realize how early we are in this cycle. So you might not be early and to, to make the investment or bet that you did with your funds and everything else, you would have done diligence like I did diligence and then on every attack factor, what does this look like? And come to the realization that it's not Bitcoin that holds the risk. Bitcoin's an asymmetric bet. It's the existing system and everything priced in other dollars that holds the massive risk. And there's very few people that still understand that. And, and, and so we are so early in this cycle. Um, and, and so now to your having cycle, I agree with you. It won't look, it, I, I suspect it won't exactly match. And whether it matches closer in this cycle or the next one, at some point that it will arbitrage out. Right, because right, it just it seems there's too many people playing from the same playbook. And it, 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 my experience with markets is is that it just never, whenever when there's a, such a strong consensus, and you know people are tweeting, where are we in the, in this? What do you think we are in the cycle? You know, it, it just doesn't play out that way. Um, yeah, it, um, but what I would say is, if you ask most people, like you're you're deeply in here. I, in, in YPO around my technology friends and, and, and very wealthy individuals, not the foggiest, like it's really early. Oh no, I, you know, again, I mentioned I'm from LA and, you know, my collection of friends there, all of whom, you know, done reasonably well, none of them own any Bitcoin. I mean, any Bitcoin, zero. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually, uh, last week, we figured out that a lot of the emails that our sales team send out have been getting bounced back. We weren't aware of it because we have the word Bitcoin like in a footer with like a, for a regulatory disclosure. And there are servers, a, a decent number of them, that if they see the word Bitcoin, it's like the word Al Qaeda. Right? <laughs> you know? So um, when when I heard that, I was like, that's awesome. It, it's uh, it's early. Um, and, I you know, I think that I think that makes it makes it very exciting so 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 think about some of the these things because by the way what i'm what um some of these concepts that we talk about so government to today one of the concepts about bitcoin is bad for the climate right it uses energy now let's dig a little bit on on that um and say so number one i think you know this but bitcoin searches for low cost energy. And so it actually helps the grid of solar expand. And it uh, and 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 that should happen it should con continue to advance uh, solar because it's uh, bitcoin miners are constantly searching for the lowest cost energy. But that's actually the small part of the conver conversation. The bigger part of the conversation is, is this. Technology including energy is deflationary. And so energy is 9% of the global GDP, and it's a number one input of everything else we do. A lot of things become, they work or they don't work because of energy. In fact, the, the in, in, entire, entire oil, um, uh, 
U.S. Uh, on oil reserve, everything else was about energy, low cost, low, low cost and energy, securing energy, and it's a geopolitical game. But now, now you have new solar, not ready to transition all to solar or renewables, but you have new energy competing at the lowest cost, additive to the energy grid. So that must therefore be deflationary and additive to deflation that we're already talking about on a kind of an exponential layer because it talks it cut it cuts across everything now what do you do as a government because what you're trying to do what you're saying is i care about climate so i'm going to fund innovation and in climate to reduce uh, planet climate damage uh, co2 emissions and every time that you increase more energy from lower cost clean energy it's lower cost and so i have to offset that lower cost by printing money to make oil prices go up to make other things work to be able to buy more and more and more so um the existing monetary system of the world you cannot grow forever on a finite pl finite planet growth with technology is different than growth for the last hundred years Growth with technology makes things free or lowers the cost so much that they, it changes the economic calculation. And that's the thing that people are really missing. It's a, and, it's a, and it's a big deal. It's impossible to cl solve climate um, out of the existing system. In fact, the existing system is the cause of climate change. No, like I think, I actually think that for the next year or so, this issue of ESG investing and Bitcoin being bad for the environment is going to be the single biggest obstacle to further adoption. And I think it's sort of funny that JP Morgan, you know, Jamie Dimon is calling Bitcoin a dirty asset because there is probably no company in the world that has contributed to ruining the climate and the, the, the environment than JP Morgan, if we were to look at its sort of long history, including right now where it's representing Exxon in a proxy battle. Um, and I think by trying to characterize Bitcoin as a quote, dirty asset, right? That would slow, I think, you know, there are, investors are becoming more focused on that in the construction of their portfolios. So that- but, the, but, but we have a challenge because because our that is a soundbite and you're providing a nuanced, right, intelligent, but not sound by response. And, and, and this is something we as a community, I think, need to work on. I think so, too, because here's what I believe, believe. If technology, and it's not an if, technology is advancing exponentially, that, that technology should be giving us abundance for less. We don't need as many things. It gives us more for free. And jobs come out of the equation. And if jobs can come out of the equation as things go to free, we don't have to be on a mouse wheel forever working uh, our entire lives to try to save enough money to retire the last 10. It looks different. But in that model, which is required for the t change in technology, it's a structural change. Um, in that model, Bitcoin might be the only thing that saves the planet. It's actually exactly the opposite to what people are talking about. What they're talking about is the same reason they talk about real estate always going up without measuring, because they're measuring from within a system. And real estate always goes up from within a system if you don't look at the $185 trillion of stimulus it took in the last 20 years to make real estate always go up. Shopping malls haven't got, always gone up. But, uh, <laughs> But, um, but but again, what what you're talking about, even if you looked at the CPI index and everything else, is imagine the CPI index, what that would look like without that $185 trillion of stimulus over the last 20 years. So it wouldn't just be TVs getting bigger and cheaper. It wouldn't be just your computers. The The CPI index and all of that is... is, is all the technology products are outrunning that at a scale and driving price. Well, you, you would never have had fracking, right? Exactly. Easy money made right. fracking possible, right? right. You know, all right. that capital was lost, right? But it, it was it was easy money that financed, right? That sort of dirty. Um, and I'm an energy guy. I spent a lot of time trading energy. Um, uh, no, I look. I think it's fascinating. If you right, if you look out 50 years from now, we're not going to be using fossil fuels, right? And, and 
Well, General Motors says in 2030, right, they don't want to sell any cars, right, that you other than electric cars. So this problem self-corrects, right? Because let's face it, 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 it is true that over half of Bitcoin is not renewable, right? And some portion of it is dirty coal coming out of Ottoman Mongolia, right? I mean, we, we, we can't hide from that. That is true. Um, but it's also true, back to my roots in LA, that approximately 28% of the electricity that goes into your Tesla is coal. Right. Because, because the power that, that DWP gets, it used to be about 50% coal. They've got it under 30, but they have coal plants that they own, not in California, Nevada and Utah. They have transmission lines. And so you're pouring you know, almost 30% of what you're putting in your Tesla is coal. So it's, it's sort of all around us. But, but you know. But, it, but, 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 but again, what, what ends up happening is technologies it happens uh, really slowly. So they, they happen fast. But we misjudge. We overestimate the impact early on. And then we massively underestimate the impact later. And you've read it in the book, but that if, if I fold a piece of paper on itself 50 times, that piece of paper will reach from here to the sun. I've, re, I've asked that question to people all over the, uh, uh, all over the world, to, to audiences, and most people guess, 99% of people guess about two inches. Uh, um, that the piece of paper would be two inches, but it shows, and I'm not doing it for, okay, look at a parlor trick. What it does is shows how badly we misunderstand uh, exponentials. And it is the same reason why we, we, we early on in solar, we think it's going to work and it costs way too much and nobody pays attention because it doesn't hit an economic calculation that matters. And, and then we underestimate it on the other side because the, as, a, as the economic viability increases, all the market moves there. Well, as the market's moving there because of lower prices, it's gonna transition faster and faster and faster. And the corresponding offset for the existing inflationary system has to be more and more printing of money to try to eradicate that technology gain. So Jeff, if we're wrong, right, and I'm, you know, embarrassed by the fact that I wore a Bitcoin hat <laughs> for the rally of 2000, 2021. I'm like a, a pitcher with a no hitter. I'm afraid to take it off. Um, why are we going to be wrong? What do you worry about? Um, if there's one thing I still uh, um, th think about or I'm curious about, it's, uh, and, and in the next years i'm not worried about it because i'm pretty deep into the technologists around it but but quantum um, really? is is a um and and next five ten years and i think the network is designed in a way that it'll get uh um it gets stronger and stronger against this so it should be post quantum uh, 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 uh it, favorability and everything else and a network of will evolve it's designed into the network but but that is something that uh that if i said an edge case if i was looking for edge cases of the very uh, so there's a non-zero chance if i'm saying technology is moving this fast and it's hard to forecast how fast fast technology is moving then it would be really ignorant of me to say it's impossible no matter what Mm -hmm. that some something uh something moves so i watch for that i i i think right now it's almost a zero probability um where we are today but it, but i'll continue to watch for that and and where would we see that bubbling up in other words you know uh I, I, you know i said i actually was an energy investor and i rightly underestimated the speed through which renewables would take the legs out of the energy market Right. right. So yeah, I learned from that. Um, so I do learning from that experience. Like, what are the signs that this is something that we that is is sort of happening, and we need to pay really careful attention to? So, so it's, it would be hard to go into because the attack vectors aren't what people think, and there's not. Uh, and so, to to say it's going to nullify the whole network. I don't believe that, and the algorithm change, uh, the uh, the hashing changes to be able to admit uh, to to update that. And as well, quantum computers are really bad at algorithms, 
And so, so it, it makes it today, maybe for the next 10 years, technically unfeasible to be able to do that. But if you if you broke through that earlier at some other point, some of the early Bitcoin um, in the in the wallets weren't weren't uh, they were public keys or whatever, and so you you could hack those. You might be able to hack those, and by doing by doing so, not vol- not invalidate the network or anything else, but it would create an incentive at some point down the road unless the protocol changes to, to try to, because there's so much value in those early coins. So, so there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of, when you look at these different, different things, is it risk to the entire network? Is it risk to the blockchain? Probably not, but where, where could it hold, uh, it hurt the value for some time? Well, look, Jeff, I follow you on Twitter, so I hope you'll tweet about it because I probably won't otherwise like be aware that there's development. <laughs> so um, I'm going to count on your Twitter feed as you know uh, to let us know. You know, that we need to be uh, you, know, you, you know be careful. Uh, this has been great. You know, um, I'm sorry, you're going to say something. No, and and and, and I think it, the, the beautiful thing about this, uh, and 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 probably the best way to look at this is if you think about all the sharp minds defending this network and the innovation that's coming onto this network and the amount of now capital innovation, the, the, this, the smartest technology minds, um, it, Bitcoin Twitter is a really great spot. It's harsh sometimes, but it, but it constantly evolves and it's, and it's, it's, it's kind of clarifying the best information wins. No, I actually joined Twitter in September of last year just because I, I, I had been told that I should follow Bitcoin Twitter. And you're right, it, it, it is a great exchange of ideas. Um, and what's really impressed me is the number of smart minds, really smart minds in Bitcoin. And then the other thing that really got me super comfortable, so much so, you know, I put my personal capital in first, but I'm riskier with my own money than I am when I'm a fiduciary of others was that this was great. As I said, BJ's piece was great. There's a bunch of other stuff that, that not as good as this stuff, but that was helpful. And when we, when we started marketing, you know, uh, talking about Bitcoin, you know, regulators like us to have things that are fair and balanced. So we had to find stuff that was giving the, the negative case on Bitcoin. And there is a negative case, but there are no really thoughtful pieces out there. There is no counter to this or VJ's piece where you read it and you're like, that's really compelling, right? So you, I don't know, that, that, that helped me a lot because it's one thing for Nero Rubini to fire off tweets and write a column here, but they're ad hominem, ad hominem in text. Um, yeah, here's, here's what, and, and I'd seriously ask, ask anybody, ask on Twitter, ask anybody. How are you going to make the existing system work without concentrating all power in the state against technology moving at this rate? And the, and 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 what you'll find you'll what you'll find is a whole bunch of crickets on that. They'll say, "Well, we can't allow deflation because deflation would be bad for debt," which is true, and everything. And and but you'll find a whole bunch of crickets on that con, con, conversation that I I just I had because. It's impossible. And that's why I said this is a structural change to society. It's a, and, and those structural changes don't come around very often. And we don't notice them when they do. Just like Blockbuster didn't notice Netflix. And, and, and that's what's happening in our monetary system today. And there's very few people that are, are really understanding what it means for everything else. The rules, all of the rules change. It's almost upside down from the way we grew up. And, and well, I don't know if I, I was ready to like that or anything else. It doesn't change, it doesn't change the facts. So we better start to design, we better to start to design a system that is congruent with that system. Well, Jeff, I've become a Buddhist. I don't like or dislike, I just accept things as they are and make decisions. Oh, I love that. <laughs> love that. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you so much. This was awesome. I want to flash your book again, which I highly recommend, The Price of Tomorrow. And, um, you know, this has really been great. You know, thank you for taking the time. And, you know, uh, let's uh, let's stay in touch. And hopefully we'll have you, you know, we're having uh, SALT in New York in September. And we'd love to have you on a panel uh, 
talking Bitcoin, deflation, monetary policy. I'd love to love to do that. Thanks again for having me. That'd be great. Joe, you want to take us out? Absolutely. Thank you again, Jeff. And thank you, Brett, for leading this conversation. I'm glad we got to hold up the book and be um, advertorial about that. So as Brett mentioned, we are coming to New York for Salt New York in September 13th through 15th. So more information will be available on our website at salt.org. If you're looking to learn more about Salt Talks, listen to us on podcast salt.org backslash talks, where you can also find our full library of previous Salt Talks dating back to May of 2020. We're also on social media. If you want to watch any of these or engage with our conversation on Twitter, it's at Salt Conference. YouTube is Salt Tube. And we're also, of course, on LinkedIn and Facebook. But on behalf of the entire Salt team, this is Joe Aletto signing off for today. We'll see you again soon.